So hi everyone and a very good morning to all of you. Welcome back once again to another session of PIB 247. In today's class, we are going to discuss the PIB news from 1st and 2nd of January 2023. So from today, we are going to start a new year, uh, a new year where we are going to cover the news from 1st and 2nd January of 2023. So I hope guys, your preparations for the upcoming RBI gateway examination are going well. And as you all know, that uh, it is expected that the examination, the phase one will be conducted on 1st of April or you can say in 1st or 2nd week of April. So now is the high time that you guys should focus on the preparation. All right. And I'm with you. Anything you can ask related to preparation. So let's begin with the very first question without any delay. Question number one. And guys, as you know, the, the, the parliament session has been ended now. So from now on, the sessions will be uh, you know, five, six, seven, eight questions. It will be that much because it is so relevant. It is not that much in PIB. Okay? And I just don't want that I will tell you everything in PIB. That is not, you know, required. And then, what will be the benefit of it? What will be the benefit of it? When I will be studying everything here. Right? So, which institution or institutions under the Ministry of Ayush, headed by Sarbanan Sonowal, has or have launched? The scope for mainstreaming Ayurveda research in teaching professionals, which in short is smart program for Ayurveda professional to boost research and development in Ayurveda in the country. So basically a smart program, right? A new program, which is named as smart has been launched by Ministry of Ayush. And the question is which institute or institutes have launched it. All right. So let's talk about smart program. First of all, you should remember the full form of smart because you never know. Ki full form se hi question a jai. Scope for mainstreaming Ayurveda research in teaching professionals. Right. So first, first thing is very much clear that this scheme is for teaching professionals who are working in the Ayush sector. Right. The teachers of Ayurveda, the teachers of Yunani, Siddha, Homeopathy. Right. So one thing is clear. It is for teaching professionals. Now for what? Teaching professionals mein kya karenge? Scope for mainstreaming Ayurveda research, which means the government through Ministry of Ayush is intended towards enhancing the research and development in the Ayush sector. Okay? And who is it through? Teaching professionals ke through, teachers ke through. Right? So that is the objective of this program. So what is the objective? To boost scientific research in priority healthcare research areas through Ayurveda colleges and hospitals. Right? This scheme, this program will be implemented by National Council for Indian System of Medicine, number one, and number two, Central Council for Research in Ayurvedic Sciences. These are the two institutions which will implement this program. All right. And of course, if, if anyone asks you which, uh, which will be the nodal ministry, so of course, it is Ministry of Ayush. Okay, ministry of Ayush, yoga, isme koi doubt, I believe, nahi hona chahiye. Now, through this initiative, Ayush Ministry aims to open new avenues for quality research in Ayurveda. It is very clear. And these are the areas, right? These are the areas uh, where research and development will be done, right? In these areas, research and development will be done. And uh, whoever uh, is, will do research in these areas will be provided support and Innovative ideas jo bhi honge, unko promote kiya jayega through this program which is known as smart program. Now you don't have to remember all these focus areas that is not at all required for the examination, right? Isko sab saare aapko yaad rakhne ki zarurat nahi hai. Take us just, it is just for the basic understanding ki, okay, in these areas, the research and development will be promoted. Take it. So that is all about the smart program and which are those two institutions? It is National Commission for Indian System of Medicine and Central Council for Research in Ayurvedic Sciences. These are the two institutions. So therefore, option D will be the correct answer A and B. Let's move ahead to question number two, which is about Indian Science Congress. So this time, 108th edition. Okay, this will be the 108th edition. Last year, it was 107th edition, which took place in Bangalore, right? The last edition, 107th edition took place in Bangalore, which is of course in Karnataka. So this time it is the 108th edition of Indian Science Congress. The question is which of the following programs are being organized alongside 108th Indian Science Congress. Basically under the ambit of uh, Indian Science Congress, which among the following programs will be organized. Okay. 
So let's talk about Indian Science Congress and then we will come back to the question. So this time it will take place in Rashtrasan Tokoloji Maharaj Nagpur University of Nagpur. Okay? There is a university in Nagpur which is Rashtrasan Tokoloji Maharaj. Uh, I'm sorry, agar pronunciation is wrong, Tukadoji or Tukloji. I don't know. I'm sorry about that. So Rashtrasan Tokoloji Maharaj Nagpur University which is of course in Nagpur. This will be the uh, venue for 108th edition of Indian Science Congress. The focal theme this year will be science and technology for sustainable development with women empowerment. Basically, this time we are focusing on both sustainable development and women empowerment. Right? Every year it is conducted by Indian Science Congress Association, which is a very old organization. Hai. It was established in the year 1914, right? more than 100 years ago. And this year's Congress will deliberate on sustainable development as discussed with inclusive involvement of all sections of society, including with a major focus on women. Okay? Moving ahead. So these are the programs which will take place under the ambit of Indian Science Congress. Number one, Children's Science Congress will take place to promote scientific temperament among the students. Number one, Farmers Science Congress will take place to provide a platform to improve the bioeconomy and attract the young generation towards agriculture. Right? Number three, Tribal Science Congress will take place and this will take place to display the indigenous Asian knowledge system and practice of the tribal groups, thereby focusing on the empowerment of tribal women. And number four, Pride of Indian Mega Expo, which will take place to showcase the significant contribution of Indian science and technology to the society. Jo Bharat ki science and technology hai, usne society ko kitna contribute kiya hai, usko uh, present karne ke liye, this pride of India mega expo will take place. Right? And this time we have a Vigyan Jyoti as well. Like we have an Olympic flame. Jaise maar paas Olympic, Olympic flame hai. Similarly now, this time we have a Vigyan Jyoti or you can say flame of knowledge. Right? In English, they are calling it as flame of knowledge. Now, it has been lightened up. And this is the Indian Science Congress. Chale ga, tab tak ye lighten up ga. And it will be installed at the university campus. Uh, Rashtrasan Tukhodoji Maharaj University. And will continue to be alive till the end of this Congress. Alright? Now, talking about this organization which every year conducts this Indian Science Congress. So it is Indian Science Congress Association. It was established, as I told you already, in 1914. And the headquarters are in Kolkata, which is of course in West Bengal. It means annually in the first week of January. <coughs> and this meeting is known as what? Indian Science Congress, right? The very first Indian Science Congress was organized in 1914 at the Asiatic Society in Kolkata. And it has a membership of more than 30,000 scientists. General President of ISCA is Dr. Vijay Lakshmi Saxena and in the in more than 100 years of history of ISCA, she is the second woman general president of ISCA. First was Professor Geeta Bali, which, uh, which who was the general president in financial year in uh, during the year 2011-12. Okay. So that is all about this ISCA and now let's come back to the question. So which programs are being organized? Children's Science Congress, Pharma Science Congress, Tribal Science Congress and Pride of India Mega Expo. All of the above is the correct answer which means option E, 1, 2, 3 and 4. Okay. Moving ahead to question number 3. Question number 3 is about Prahari Mobile App. So which central paramilitary force has launched Prahari Mobile App to enable its Javans to get personal and service related uh, service related information, housing related information, Ayushman CAPF related information and other schemes and programs related information on their mobile. So this Prahari mobile app, remember guys, has been launched by Border Security Force, right? It has been launched by Border Security Force, BSF, who protects our border with uh, Pakistan, right? So what are the features of this app? Uh, it will Pakistan and Bangladesh. Yes. So BSF protects our border with Pakistan and Bangladesh. Do you remember this as well? China ke saath protect karta ITBP. Okay. Uh, so what are the features? So it will enable BSF Javans 
to get personal and service related information, housing related information, Ayushman CAPF related information and other program or uh, schemes which are meant for the Jawans related information on their mobile. It will also provide access to GPF which is General Provident Fund, bio data, grievance redressal on centralized public grievance redressal and monitoring system. Right. And it will also connect the BSF Jabans to the portals of the Ministry of Home Affairs. All right. So that is all. And of course, Ministry of Home Affairs is headed by Mr. Ramesh Shah, who is also the Minister of Cooperation. So which paramilitary force is this? It is Border Security Force. Option E is the correct answer. Question number four. Name the challenge. So you just have to name the challenge launched by the Ministry of Rural Development headed by Headed by, come on, headed by Dr. Giriraj Singh under Mr. Giriraj Singh, not Dr. Giriraj Singh, under Deen Dayal Antyodhya Yojana, National Rural uh, Livelihood Mission to invite ideas, solutions and actions that can transform the rural economy. So basically it is a challenge through which the Ministry of Rural Development is inviting the innovative ideas which can transform the rural economy, right? Now the name of this challenge is Prajwala. Prajwala and it has been initiated under day NRLM which is Deen Dayal Antyodhya Yojana National Rural Livelihood Mission. This mission provides livelihood opportunities to the beneficiaries in the rural areas. Okay? And if you want to know about this scheme in detail, you can search for Anujindal government schemes. Anujindal government schemes. So you will have a playlist there. I have explained this scheme. Right? So why this challenge to... Uh, Invite ideas, solutions and actions that can transform the rural economy. That is it. Now it will serve as a platform to invite ideas. Again, same thing. And these are the focus areas. Focus on women and marginalized section of the uh, rural areas. Right. Number two, localized models. Sustainability should be there. The idea should be sustainable in nature. Aisa nahi ki ek saal ka benefit de diya. Aisa kuch nahi hoga. Cost effective solution should be there. <laughs> because we are talking about the rural areas. And of course, in urban areas as well, we need cost effective solutions only and multi sectoral ideas and solutions. So, these are the five focus uh, categories. Well, these are the areas where this challenge is focused. Okay? And remember, the shortlisted ideas will be acknowledged by day NRLM and they will be provided support through this scheme from an expert panel and incubation support to scale up. And the top five ideas, the top five ideas will be rewarded with rupees 2 lakh each. 2 lakh, ek ek ko, matlab, total, kitna ho jayega? 10 lakh rupi. Theek hai? So, what is the name of the challenge? It is Prajwala, option B is the correct answer. And now guys, let's move ahead to the questions which do not need much explanations, which means questions in short. But before that, if you want to have the PDF of this session, you can join this Telegram channel. The link is in description. And if you have any doubts re related to examination or PIB 247 or government schemes, you can follow me here. So question number five, which has the Ministry of Textiles headed by Piyush Goel organized the second phase of Sari festival, which, in, uh, which is Virasat celebrating 75 hand woven saris of India. Its first play, its first phase took place in New Delhi. And second phase also took place in New Delhi. Option E is the correct answer. And there is no detail required for required for uh, this news. Okay. New Delhi is the correct answer. Ministry of Coal is undertaking 51 first mile connectivity projects of 522 million ton per annum capacity at cost of 18,000 crores. These FMC projects aim at ensuring efficient and environment friendly coal evacuation to strengthen India's energy security and to realize the self-reliance by replacing imported coal with domestically mined coal by which year these projects will be commissioned. So these projects will be commissioned by financial year 2025. Now guys, one thing I would like to tell here that uh, I'm talking about these questions in short. See, for example, if I take the example of this question. Now, अब आपके दिमाग में ये आ रहा होगा कि क्या हमें सिर्फ वेन्यू ही याद रखना है क्योंकि सर ने तो सिर्फ वेन्यू का ही क्वेश्चन रखा था तो वी शुड रिमेंबर द वेन्यू एज ओनली नो अब इस क्वेश्चन में जो जो चीजें मेंशनड है वो भी आपके सामने प्रेजेंटेड प्रेजेंट की गई है तो यू शुड रिमेंबर दैट एज वेल लाइक फॉर एग्जांपल 
दिस क्वेश्चन कैन ऑल्सो बी आस्ट लाइक विच मिनिस्ट्री हैज ऑर्गेनाइज दिरासत कैंपेन इन दैट केस दुड बी मिनिस्ट्री ऑफ टेक्सटाइल and question can be also asked in another form like name the campaign or name the festival which was organized by ministry of textile in new delhi right to celebrate 75 hand woven sarees of india you are getting my point so <clears throat> basically question in short dene ka jo objective hai wo ye hai ki aapka ek question ke through hi us news se related sari information cover ho jaye all right i hope this is clear question number 7 Uh, which is the last question for today dr shamak prasad mukherjee national institute of water and sanitation which in short is nivas nivas yaad rakhna nivas bhi pucha ja sakta hai under the ministry of jal shakti was recently inaugurated in which state so it was inaugurated at kolkata and kolkata of course is in west bengal option d is the correct answer all right so that's it for today's session i hope all the questions and their explanations are clear If you have any doubts, you can ask me in the comment section. And for any exam-related doubts, you can also call on you can also call on double nine double nine four double six two double five. Right? ठीक है तो फिर मिलते हैं अगले सेशन में. Goodbye. Take care and God bless.